Hi, Dr. Scott Homer. Nice to meet you. Hi, Alan Blank. Nice to meet you. Hey, Alan. Val Lewis. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. All righty, we're just going to log in. Great. Oh, great. You already got case one up. We're just going to take the cases in order. Um, when Don't start till the bell rings. When the bell rings the second time, you'll be done. Um, it's really a better exam if we get through all three cases. So if we cut you off or rush you, we're not trying to be rude. We just want to make sure you get a fair exam. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, and that's the bell. So why don't we start with the first case? Sure, so this first case is a 63-year-old male. He fell to the ground from standing after he was making dinner at home and slipped on the floor. Uh, the fall was not preceded by any chest pain or dizziness. He had to call an ambulance to get to the emergency room as he couldn't get up. And in the emergency room, radiographs were obtained showing a displaced femoral neck fracture. Uh, we examined him in the emergency room and found him to be neurovascularly intact with a short and externally rotated right lower extremity. There's a staging system that you use for femoral neck fractures. Do you know it? Yes, so typically when evaluating femoral neck fractures, the most important classification system is identifying whether the fracture is displaced or non-displaced. And as we can see from the AP radiograph here of the pelvis, as well as the lateral here, this is a displaced uh, transcervical femoral neck fracture. Great. So what are you going to discuss with the patient and their family at this point? So I did have an informed conversation with the patient and his family that this is, uh, in my opinion, an operative injury. Uh, he's a very functional 63-year-old male, and to get him back to the level of function that he desires, uh, this is best treated with a total hip arthroplasty. Did you give him the treatment options and then discuss the one you recommended? Yes. So I did discuss with him that um, at times in younger patients, the option for open reduction internal fixation can be considered, uh, but there are some risks involved with that, such as union. Um, the alternative to a total hip arthroplasty is potentially a, a hemiarthroplasty, but considering his age and level of function, I thought it was more appropriate to offer him a total hip arthroplasty as my uh, primary recommendation. Great. Do you have any more films? Yes. Yeah, films? So here we can see an AP of the hip, and we also obtained radiographs of the entire femur, including the knee, which did not demonstrate any other fractures or abnormalities. Let's see what you did. So he was medically optimized and we took him for surgery the next day and I performed a posterior approach total hip arthroplasty. So why did you pick this uncollared press fit stem? So I did consider whether to use a cemented stem or a press fit stem and considering the quality of bone in the patient's cortices, I thought he was a good candidate for a press fit stem. Okay. Is there any <clears throat> literature showing advantages to both a press fit or a, or a cemented stem? Well, certainly there are some risks with a press fit stem, um, including the potential for thigh pain as well as periprosthetic uh, fracture. Uh, however, again, considering the, the, the quality of the bone that I perceived intraoperatively, I thought he was a good candidate for that. Okay. Keep going. How do you handle the patient postoperatively? What's your plan? So postoperatively, I did have posterior hip precautions and got Which him. Sure, what? So I will limit his internal rotation and flexion of the hip. Uh, he was evaluated by physical therapy the next day. Um, had his pain controlled. Had him on DVT prophylaxis, and he was able. What, what DVT prophylaxis do you use? Um, considering he didn't have any severe risk factors for thromboembolic events, we had him on aspirin. Do you know the dose of aspirin? So he was given 81 milligrams BID, and he was what, able to- Why that dose? Um, the dose of 81 milligrams BID does uh, acetylate all of the platelets appropriately to the same amount of 325, and it has less risk for bleeding. Okay. So are, is he weight-bearing or non-weight-bearing? He is full weight-bearing, weight-bearing less tolerated, yes. With assist at the beginning? Yeah, he used a walker for the first couple of days just to get his strength back, and I saw him back in the office by one week post-operatively, I'm sorry, two weeks post-operatively, and he was at that point unassisted, uh, doing quite well. We removed the stitches, and he was progressing well with physical therapy. Do you always use a, sc a screw in the acetabulum? 
I most often do, um, even when there is a, a good press fit or rim fit. Um, I think there is some risk of putting in screws, certainly, um, but the potential benefit of obtaining better fixation, in, in my mind, is worth that risk. Do you know where the riskiest quadrant is to put in screws? So I typically put my screws in the uh, superior and posterior quadrant, as that's the safest, but um, certainly there's risks in every quadrant, and so long as you maintain in the bony corridor, they, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so I saw him back at six weeks post-operatively, and he was doing quite well. Um, he was ambulating unassisted, his pain was well controlled, and I then continued to follow him at three months, six months, and we will see him at one year as well. So, and how was he doing at six months? He was having no acute issues, his pain was very well controlled, and he was overall quite happy with his result. Okay. Anything else? I know, I'm all set. Why don't we go on to case two? Okay, great. So in your final note, you told the mom to follow up as needed. What sort of things would you tell her to look out for in the future? Well, as the fracture is healed at this point, I felt he could go back to full activities. Um, and I let the mom know if he starts having any new pain, stiffness, or she notices any kind of growth deformities that she should call my office immediately and we can evaluate him. Well, that's our final bell. So I think we're done. Great, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thanks.